Now, the House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the sale of adulterated petroleum across the country. The decision came after a motion of urgent national importance moved by Honorable Mohammed Mongono, the chief whip of the House. Now, correspondent Emmanuel Ehijide completes the report. The decision by the members of the Green Chamber to invite the airing importers is to stop the toxic fuel from causing more havoc. In a motion, Honorable Munguno urges NNPC to suspend all importers found to be culpable. He said there was a need to put in place a credible monitoring and surveillance system that would ensure adequate quality petroleum products are imported into the country. There is a need to put in place systems that will check the quality of petroleum products that is being imported into the country. And this incident further reinforces the clamor by all and sundry in Nigeria that the petroleum, the Wari Petroleum Refining Company the Potaco, our petroleum refining companies should be rebumped. Other lawmakers contributed to the debate, suggesting that guilty importers should not only be brought to book, but compelled to compensate for the damages caused by their actions. They also suggested the establishment of modular refineries in the country to cater to the shortfall of products in the system. I believe that there are inspections at the point of loading of this petroleum product. Who are those responsible for inspection at that point? Did they actually perform their responsibility? And I believe that there is um, inspection at the point of uploading, because I don't believe that this PMS was adulterated on the high sea. They have brought in from under recovery, they are now saying it is three trillion that we have to spend every year. What are they contributing to the economy? And we are returning, returning overhead costs a uh, recurrent cost for the refineries for the past six, seven years. Mr. Speaker, each time and every day, we will be looking for what is the challenges of security, the consequential effect of the refineries working, and then put into production is employment of young people. All innocent Nigerians who, be, who fell victim to this adulterated uh, petroleum and their vehicles or whatever they are used have been spoiled should be considered in the investigation. My amendment is to urge NNPC to suspend the four companies that imported this adulterated foil that they imported from Belgium. When the motion was put to a vote by the presiding speaker, Idris Wasser, the deputy speaker of the House, it was adopted. The House resolved to invite the NNPC for more details on the matter while mandating the House Committee on Petroleum Resources Downstream to investigate the release of adulterated petroleum across the country. Well, back to the adulterated fuel story, the House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the sale of adulterated petroleum across the country. The decision came after a motion of urgent national importance moved by Honorable Mohammed Mongono, the Chief Whip of the House of Representatives. Uh, we have joining us now, Bala Zaka, Petroleum Engineer and I'm a Public Affairs I'm Analyst. Many thanks for joining us, uh, Bala. Thank you. All right, let's talk about uh, what happened on the floor of um, the House of Representatives today. And uh, the reps, uh, they have decided to investigate um, Wando and some other petroleum marketers involved uh, in this issue of uh, adulterated fuel. But how far do you think this investigation would go? Well, this investigation should go as deep as possible. Because what has happened is not only an internal disgrace to Nigeria, but it has caused international disgrace to the image of Nigeria as an oil producing nation, as a member of OPEC, and as a country whose citizen is presiding over the biggest crude oil cartel in the whole world. Because as I'm speaking to you right now, the OPEC Secretary General the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries Secretary General is Al-Haji Sanusi Barkindo. And that 
person is a Nigerian. You can imagine having a Nigerian presiding over all these great countries. But when you look at the back end, it is only his own country that cannot boast of effective or functional refineries. It is only his own country that, due to recklessness and irresponsibility, imported contaminated fuel will be brought in. While he is doing a good job, but we will not be surprised if his colleagues are mocking him. So, to that extent, there should be a thorough investigation and the culprits found must be punished according to the laws of this great country called Nigeria. All right, thank you, Bala. But then I'm still bothered. I, I really need to understand um, you know, the origin or maybe get some sort of historic, historical perspective um, concerning all of this. You know, how could a country as big as Nigeria import uh, fuel you know, that's not up to specification and them having high ethanol content? How could it have escaped uh, maybe authorities, uh, regulation, and how could it have found its way into the country? Excellent. And God bless you for that excellent question. The reason why an adulterated fuel like that found itself into the shores of Nigeria, and not only into the shores of Nigeria, got to the retail outlets, got to consumers, and caused us this economic and uh, health harm or calamities was because all the three control mechanisms failed. And the control mechanisms are the preventive control mechanism, the detective control mechanism, and the compensative or corrective control mechanism. And let me explain. Go ahead, please. The preventive control mechanism failed because if it had not failed, right from the point of loading, they should have prevented that vessel from coming in. Meaning that from the point of loading, the quality control and quality assurance processes should have been thorough and if they were thorough the vessel will have even been prevented from leaving that the, the point of loading and heading towards nigeria so that control or safeguard failed then when it got to the shores of nigeria the detective safeguard or the detective control mechanism should have detected that the wrong fuel or the contaminated or adulterated fuel has reached the shores of Nigeria. If it had been detected at that point, it would have also been halted. And at that point, all we needed to have done would have been to release our strategic reserves and supply to the citizens while we do something about getting the right uh, fuel. But unfortunately, the detective control mechanism also failed and the fuel got I mean, permeated itself across the fabric of Nigeria and got to retail outlets that we technically call filling stations. And even when it goes to the filling stations, it was not known or detected until it started destroying cars and destroying uh, humans because it has caused health hazards. And even as at that time, the necessary authority, meaning the Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory agency didn't announce to the public and they responded more than after 72 hours because if they had even reacted at that point the calamities will have been right. mediated or re reduced so all the control mechanisms collapse which right. is terrible and shameful all right, thank you so much. Uh, that was um, Zaka Bala, Petroleum Engineer and Public Affairs Analyst, uh, uh, bringing um, insight and solutions to the issues of um, adulterated fuel in Nigeria. Many thanks once again, uh, Bala Zaka. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.